This is the Louis T. Network. In the lab room. Ten minutes or less. Detroit Lions. Welcome, you are in the lab room. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me here on the program, 10 Minutes or Less, D. Twa Lions. So, clock, go. Season rewind for the Detroit Lions. And this was a necessary evil. The 2013 season needed to happen the way it did. And I'm not one to advocate for guys to get fired, get canned, lose a job, none of that stuff. That's not me. That's not what I'm about. But change was necessary in Detroit. And it had to happen the way that it did for it to happen, it seemed like. Because you could argue that Jim Schwartz could have been fired last year. You could have argued that he could have been fired three years ago. He had the big season sandwich in between when they went to the postseason Look, none of that matters now. The point of the matter is the Lions started out this season 5-3. and three. All of their losses prior to the bye were to quality opponents. They had lost to the Arizona Cardinals. They had lost to the Green Bay Packers. And they had lost to the Cincinnati Bengals. So they were 5-3 and three going into the bye week. Perfectly placed bye in week 9. Cuts the season directly in half. You're five and three. You're playing good football. You're feeling good about yourself. You're atop your division. I mean, what really more do you want if you're the Lions? Aaron Rodgers is out. Jay Cutler is out. The Vikings stink. You're in command of the future if you are the Lions. If you want this division, it's yours for the taking. So you come off the bye, and then you do... Something that you hadn't done earlier in the season. You start losing the bad football teams. Earlier in the season, you were winning the games you were supposed to win, and you were losing to quality opponents. At some point, you're hoping you get better. You start to beat the better teams in the league. But if you just take care of business against the bad football teams, you're going to the postseason. But that's not what happened after the bye. After the bye, you start losing to teams like Pittsburgh, Tampa Bay, New York Giants. It just goes downhill from there. You lose to the Vikings. You lose to the Ravens, none of which are postseason teams. And you finish up the season losing six out of your final eight games, and you finish up the season at seven and nine. Subsequently, your head coach, Jim Schwartz, gets fired. That needed to be done. So now, new blood in Detroit. They bring in Jim Caldwell, and I think he's going to be a very calming influence on a team that could use a very calming influence. And so now you look toward the future. 2014 offseason, and you look at the Detroit Lions and all of their free agents. And so you take a look at the list. Leroy Harris, Don Malbach, Sean Hill. All of these guys are restricted in Joyt Bell, Chris Durham, and Jeremy Ross. You look at Kevin Ogletree, he's not restricted, and neither are the rest of these guys. Michael Spurlock, Brandon Pettigrew, Jason Fox, Dylan Gandy, Israel Adonage, Willie Young, Andre Fuellen, Rocky McIntosh, Rasheen Mathis, John Wendling, and David Akers. So you look at this Detroit Lions football team and the direction that they're going in, if I'm the Detroit Lions. I really don't want a lot of that stuff back because it's a new regime. I'm ready to clean house. I'm ready to start anew. I, I want it to be fresh. I want everything to be fresh and new. And when everything is fresh and new and vibrant, you can get some mistakes, but you also can get immediate results. And this team has a lot of veterans that are extremely good. I mean, this is a talent-filled roster, and it's top-heavy in, in certain instances, of course, with Havens to Muggletron and Matthew Stafford and, and Reggie Bush. And so you've got talent in a lot of places. Glover Quinn is a very talented safety. 
DeAndre Levy at the linebacker position, Sue and and Nick Fairley inside. I mean, you've got a lot of guys that are extremely talented at their position. So this team is chock full of elite stuff. Now you just need to surround it with a lot of guys that know their roles and play them well. And so you need some supporting cast guys. Everybody can't be stars. And so now if you're the Detroit Lions, your cap situation isn't the greatest. It's not the worst. There's teams in the league with worse cap situations. But you definitely had to do some things. You got rid of Nate Burleson. You cut ties with Louis Delmas. You got rid of one of your tight ends. And so now you kind of got back to even ground. You got back to where you feel like, okay, now we make a move here. We void a contract there. We restructure a deal here. And all of a sudden, we've got a little bit of cap space. The ceiling is expected to elevate for the cap. So you'll probably get a little bit of relief there as well. So if you're the Detroit Lions, you just need to go ahead and look at the list of free agents and figure out which ones are a necessity. For me, there are only like three of them that you really need to bring back if you are the Detroit Lions. Joint Bell, to me, is at the top of the list. I, I mean... I don't know how you feel about Joyke Bell, but I feel like he's the perfect complement to Reginald Bush, a guy that you can hand the football off to. If Reggie doesn't play, he can tote the rock 23 times, no problem. If Reggie does play, he's a great offsetter to Reginald Bush, and he can catch it out of the backfield. Now, this new group might come in and say, hey, we want to give Mikel LaShore a chance. See you later, Joyke Bell. Joyke Bell might say, hey, I deserve to be paid starters money. See you later, Joyke Bell. So I don't know what the situation is in Detroit with Joyke Bell, but I know this much. On the outside looking in, that guy can play football. I take him on my team any day, and if you're the Detroit Lions, you want to have Joyke Bell back. You look at another guy that I thought helped you immensely last year, and that was Jeremy Ross. Comes over late. Packers let him go. Their loss is your game. He comes over. was stellar in the returns game. Shouldn't cost you a lot of money to get a guy back that really doesn't do anything else but return kicks. And Jeremy Ross, maybe he can double as a receiver at times in a pinch. I, I don't see why you don't bring Jeremy Ross back. He really elevated the play of your special teams unit last season. If he's not going to cost a lot and he's a restricted free agent, why not bring him back? You also look at a guy like Chris Durham. And here's another restricted free agent. All of the free agents that I think you should bring back are all restricted in Durham, Ross, and Bell. You look at Chris Durham, I don't see why you wouldn't bring him back. Again, you don't want to get rid of all your receivers. I just ran off a list of about three or four receivers, none of which are difference makers, that you got rid of this offseason that are free agents. No more of Nate Burleson. He might be able to return. I don't know what the market is for Nate Burleson, but he might come back at a smaller number. Who knows? That might have been one of those, hey, we're releasing you with the understanding that, hey, if you're willing to come back for less, and nobody else is going to pay you more, you're always welcome back in Detroit type of deals. It could be one of those situations, or it could just be a situation where it's a clean break and you don't want Nate Burleson back. Whatever the case may be, Chris Durham has done nothing wrong. He's a big body receiver. You know what? There's something to be said about guys that are big, long frames, big catch radius that can help you. I think Chris Durham is a guy, he's not a number two receiver in this league. He's definitely not a number one, but he can be a solid number three option. He can be a number four option. There's no reason not to bring Chris Durham back. He's your stuff. He's solid. You can throw him the ball. He will catch it. He's big. Bring him back. You still need a number two receiver, which takes us to the team needs for the Detroit Lions. So you look at the Lions and what they need to be a better football team. You get Jim Caldwell in the saddle. You get Terrell Austin in as your defensive coordinator. And there's some things you need to fix. And to me, the first thing you need to look at if you're the Detroit Lions is the cornerback and the safety positions. Because to me, if you're going to elevate this defense and the level of play on this defense, no more Lewis Delmas at the safety position means you need to upgrade that position. Glover Quinn, solid over there. You're good. You need to find a compliment to him. It'd be nice to go out and get somebody to come in and fill that void. And... I think there are some quality safeties out there that you don't have to go in the draft and get something young because you already got enough young stuff in your secondary, which is why I really don't know if you need to attack the cornerback position per se. I just said cornerback because it's a lot of young stuff out there. 
I like my corners well seasoned with a little bit of experience. But I think it's time for you to let the young guys play. You don't know what you have if you don't put them on the field. So let the young guys play. But you need to be experienced in that back half. Glover Quinn is already there. Add a veteran safety. There are plenty of them out there that can help you. Linebacker. Outside linebacker. Look, Stephen Tullock is great in the middle. So is outside linebacker DeAndre Levy. Six picks. The guy was awesome last year. You need someone on the other side to help you out. And so you need to find a better linebacker out there to complement those two. I think you need to go in the draft and find that linebacker. And defensive end for me, you got to get more pressure on the quarterback. With Sue and Fairley commanding so much attention in the middle, and you went out and you drafted Ezekiel Ziggy Ansah last year. He got you eight sacks. That's great. He's growing as a football player. You need somebody on the other side. So if you can draft another guy, great. I think that would help you immensely. And, of course, the elephant in the room, wide receiver, that's a must. I think your first pick in this draft should be a receiver. I, I just think you need to compliment Calvin Johnson. You've been dancing around this for a while. When, he, when Nate Brotherson went down, so did your season. And so you need to go out and draft a receiver. And not like you did last year in the fifth or sixth round. I'm talking about first round elite stuff. You need to go out and get it in the draft and handle that situation. That was the Detroit Lions. And i tell you what, they don't have a lot of money to spend, but they don't have to spend a lot of money if they're smart. I'm done. I I'm done. That was the Detroit Lions in 10 minutes or less. 10 minutes or less. Like the content? Want more? Sub up. In the lab.